For this watercolor tutorial, House on Fire, you're going to be using typically just cool colors on the bottom and real warm colors on the top. So not a lot of colors, but you're going to be using a lot of blended color. You're gonna be using your flat two inch for your sky, an eight and a four round, You'll be using your real fine liner and also your rigger. If there's other brushes that you're comfortable working with, then by all means use them. You will be using some salt and you want to have a Kleenex ready for some blotting in your sky. We'll be using cadmium yellow. We're also going to be using some cadmium red to make that nice peach color in our sky. If you prefer, you can use alizarin crimson in addition to the red, or you can use it um, in place of your red to make a peachy color. The water is going to be indigo, and also we're going to be using black for the water. Nice shadowed water. And last but not least, you're going to be using just a little bit of burnt umber when it's time to do the fence. You can see that your drawing's pretty well straightforward. I did draw out my lighthouse, my water line, my fence line, and also my other water line since the lighthouse sits on somewhat of a peninsula. We're going to be doing the sky first, all wet, wet on wet. So you want to wet your whole sky. It doesn't matter if you go over your lighthouse because your lighthouse is going to be much darker anyway. So if you want to paint right over your lighthouse, that's perfectly fine. It will cover. We're going to be starting with our cadmium yellow and we're going to be putting in our cad yellow um, first kind of lightest to darkest in our sky colors. You want to have all of those colors really really wet so that they will really blend all over your sky. If you have a lemon yellow or another color yellow that you would rather use, that's fine too, but you want to start with your lightest of your colors, which would be your yellow. I put my yellow right on my waterline. If it bleeds a little bit into your lighthouse, that's fine. And I am brushing that yellow right up into the top of the paper but it just won't be as intense as it is at the actual horizon line. Move your paper around, let it move around, let it bleed around. Another wash at the horizon line just to make sure I'm nice and intense down there. And again, allow it to move in the water so that it softens it, uh, its own edge. Move your paper around and always be sure to wipe off your painting surface, your table or wherever you're painting so that you don't get a wash back back onto your picture. Now I mixed some red in with my yellow to get a nice orangey peachy color and I'm putting that in down at the horizon line. I'm still really wet and that uh, orange will just go ahead and soften itself into my yellow and then I'm going to be using my bigger brush to go ahead and run lines through my upper sky. Move your paper around, allow it to move, allow it to soften itself. You can help it along with your brush 
Just don't rinse your brush in water. Just if you have to tap your brush off on a paper towel and go ahead and use it that way. But don't add water because that will add to a wash back. My bigger brush now, I'm going to just add some stripes of that color at a diagonal into my sky. Not real close together because I want it to have room to expand. And I'm going to let that just soften itself in the nice wet surface. Be sure to wipe off your table so you don't get that paint running back in on your picture. If you want to add more color, soften more color, as long as your paper is still nice and wet, you can do that. If it's started to dry in any way, wait and let it be totally dry and just redo the process. You don't want to create a water wash back. You have to still be totally wet to be adding additional color. That's why at the very beginning, it is best if you are really nice and wet with paint. Allow that to really dry well now, and we're going to put in our water. Our water is indigo. The first wash is watered down so that it's not too intensely dark. And you're going to do that from your water line all the way to the bottom of your page. It's going to be both your water and the color of your sand. All one color all one simple um, color of watered down indigo. Once that has dried, then we're gonna go back in and put another wash of the indigo on the water. There's actually two areas of water. There's the, the water right at the horizon line, which is the lake. So that's going to be a little bit more intense than the water that is in front or on the other side of the lighthouse. That is just the little waterway that comes out into the lake. It's going to be the same color as your sand for right now. I did put some salt on that um, wash that I put that is the lake. That's the wash that is closest to the horizon line. Now I'm going to be putting in um, the same color, my indigo, and this is where the um, sand meets that little waterway. There's a wall there. You really don't see the wall because it's just a stone. It's a bunch of rocks and stones. But you're going to make that with your big brush, your big two-inch and then you're going to soften it with some water. So put in a nice, I don't know, I'd say maybe some like, like an inch and a half worth. And then we're going to use the edge before we soften. We're going to use the edge of that big two inch and we're going to just make some lines to make that edge look uh, you don't want it to be straight across, so you want it to have different um, different lines. So all the way down, again, you're going to work at a little bit of an angle, and you're just using the side of your brush for that. Okay? Just the side of the brush. Then we're going to dry brush a little bit on the very edge of that, and I'm going to throw some salt on that. While all of that's drying, I'm going to draw in my fence posts. 
So all along your line that you have created where you want your fence to be, go ahead and draw those fence posts or fence boards in because we're gonna paint them individually and you really wanna know where they are. Some are facing towards you, some are not. So the ones not facing towards you are going to be thinner. Now that area of water that is on the other side of the um, lighthouse, I'm putting another very watered down wash of indigo on that. I don't want it to be as dark as my lake water, but I do want it to be just slightly dark for now, darker than my sandy area. You can throw some salt on it if you'd like. And I'm putting in a little touch of that peachy color just so I know where my reflections are going to be later. Once that's dry, I'm dry brushing over that area with a little bit darker of the indigo to make it look like that water is moving out to the lake. The little dune areas in the sand the little divots, the little hills, you're going to be doing them basically all the same. You'll paint them in with your darker indigo and then you're going to soften the lower edge. So just the top of the little hills or dunes are going to have the most color and as they come down, they're going to be lightened. So just with water, you'll be lightening your edges. And any place that you want a little hill or a little bump or a little dune-like shape in your sand, you're going to do it this way. Now this is not all the little footsteps. This is not um, the shadows from the fence. This is just any little hill or dune that you want to create. You'll paint it and soften the edge. Now your little steps in the sand or your little wind-blown markings in the sand, I'm using my brush to just paint those in horizontally. You know, back and forth in front of each other, wherever you would like your pathways to be. But you kind of want to lead these markings off in the same area where your fence um, posts are because they're going to act both as a shadow, but also as the walkway in between your um, mounds of sand. So anywhere that you want some texturing or some footsteps or whatever, you're just going to use that darker indigo and you're going to actually just paint those in. You can use the side of your bigger brushes or the side of a flat brush you can use the side of a round brush, or you can just simply paint them in. Whatever seems to be easier for you, whatever works for you. Now remember, you can add dunes and mounds of sand anytime. Just because you started to put in footsteps or, or texturing in your sand does not mean that you can't add more dunes or more slight hills. You can, and you would simply do them exactly the same way that you did the original ones. You would make them bigger, and you would soften the edges. For that area behind the fence, 
I'm using my big brush. I'm, I wet it first, and then I am painting in some color, not totally. I'm leaving some, some um, sections not painted in, and I'm gonna throw some salt on that. That's going to be my initial part for where I'm going to be doing some heavy shadows from all of those fence posts later. I wet a section of my sand that I wanted to create as almost a pathway. I wet it first, dragged some darker indigo through, and threw some salt on that. If there's areas that you want to re-darken or make darker, and you want soft edges, wet them first, put your paint on, and let it simply dissipate into the water. The section in on the side of the lighthouse, this is the walkway now. I'm still using my indigo, and this is the walkway out to the lighthouse. It's just a very long, thicker line. It'll go all the way to the side of your paper. Nice and dark. Now on the other side of the lighthouse, which looks very close to the wall that I just painted, I'm doing a wall of stone. This wall of stone goes down into the lake. So it's just a thinner black line. There's a very thin line of just the lighter indigo in between. And it doesn't have to be perfectly even because it's rock and stone. So if it's a little bit uneven, that's fine. But it goes, again, all the way to the other side of your paper. Then you're going to come across that little waterway and do the same thing. Because that, again, is a stone uh, wall that gently goes down into that waterway. It again is a very dark wall, so I'm using black, and it does not have to be perfectly straight. It should go at a slight diagonal. You want to keep your water line um, pretty much even, but the line itself can be a little bit uneven because it is rock and stone. Allowing that to all dry, I'm going to start to paint in all of my uh, fence posts. I mixed umber and a little bit of black, and they are all painted in the same. Some are much thinner. The ones that are not facing you and you're only seeing basically the sides of them, they are thinner. So the way that your fence is moving is going to determine how wide those posts are. But you're just going to paint in all of those posts with your umber mixed with a little bit of black. Now I'm going back up to that lighthouse wall and I'm going to paint in the rest of that wall of stone, big stones, that's on the far side of the lighthouse. Same thing, nice and dark. I'm using black. It's a little bit uneven because it's big heavy boulders and rocks and stones. It's not a perfectly designed cement wall. And I'm painting that in with my black. And then at the same time, I will add in, um, there's a couple posts in those um, boulders. There's a little buoy out at the edge of the, um, of the one wall in the waterway. I'll paint those in now with my black.
Now I want to deepen that um, area where the sand is meeting my waterway. So I am using my darker indigo. I'm going to put it on and then I am going to dry brush it at an angle and almost like a, the shape of a U so that it looks like it's elevated and coming down to a sand level. And I'm just dry brushing that to show that that um, mound of sand is elevated up to the wall. I want to re-darken my one walkway area, so I re-wet it. I'm adding in some additional indigo with some black because I wanted it to be a little bit darker. You can re-salt if you think you need to, but now is the time that if you want to darken some things, re-wet it, darken it if it needs to be darkened, and I'm also shadowing in my posts now the shadowed posts are the ones that face away from the skylight. So a lot of those posts that are getting no light from that sky, that doesn't mean the ones really tilted. It's more the ones that are like straight up and down that you don't even see. You only see the side of them. I'm throwing another wash of black on those just so that they are not all the exact same color. I also did a little bit of dry brushing on a few of the posts just to show the roughness of that old weathered wood. You certainly do not have to do that on every post because some of them are just too thin, but your bigger, heavier, thicker posts, I did a little bit of dry brushing on those. Now, while you're adding in all of your darkness to your fence posts, you want to go right down to the bottom of that fence post and you want to create your shadows in your sand from the fence post. Those shadows uh, will come right off the bottom of your post and they create the look of the sand so they can go down and create like a little mound in your sand from your post. Just follow your picture for that so that you get those shadows correct from your posts. Not every post has a shadow, so it's best to follow your picture. Now looking at your picture, you can go ahead and add in some of those darker, bigger footprints or, you know, mounds, holes in the sand made from, you know, bigger feet or bigger traffic or whatever. I'm arching some of those little lines too, just to show the way the sand is mounded. You can certainly blot if they look too dark but you wanna to start to put in some of those footprints. This is not a real smooth windblown sand. There's a lot of markings in this sand from footprints um, or traffic of some kind. So you wanna make it look that way. You want a lot of, of darker markings in your sand. You can use the side of your brush you can actually paint them in if you would rather have them painted in, but you can use the side of a number four or a number six and just lay it down on the paper. It gives you a lot of nice markings.
Now you're going to use your finest little liner to do that dead bush that is up against the um, fence on the waterway. Just a lot of little lines in the shape of a half circle. Use your finest liner. You don't want big thick branches. This is just a dead uh, bush because it's winter. So you want nice, thin, thin lines. You can also put in your fence now, just a very thin metal fence with posts. And you wanna make sure that your lines stay nice and straight, especially the vertical posts to the fence. You don't want them to be at an angle. You want them to be straight up and down. Now using black, I'm going to paint in the roof of the lighthouse, and I'm also going to paint in the parts of the lighthouse that look the darkest. So if you look at your picture, you'll see where those sections are, or you can follow my painting here, but I painted in some sections with straight black so that when I add my dark red later, those sections are going to appear to be darker. It's very important that your lines are nice and straight. If your lighthouse looks crooked, be sure that you get it nice and straight before you start painting it because you have this nice dark, dark lighthouse up against a beautifully um, pastel sky it's going to show if it's crooked. Now, while that dries, you want to make sure that you have everything that you want correct in the lower portion of your picture. All of your shadows are in, all of your footprints are in, because we're going to do our sky now. We're going to put the darkness in our sky, and then we are going to be adding some light pastel colors to our sand. You want to make sure your sky is super duper dry for this because you don't want any wash back. And if you put water on a sky that's not 100% totally super dry, you are going to get wash back. I re-wet my entire sky and I am just adding in some black. I'm doing it at an angle and I'm using that rolled up Kleenex to blot up some areas that will be my clouds. As long as I'm nice and wet, I can add some additional blacks. If it's starting to dry, do not do that. Wait for it to totally dry, and then you can go back in. But you can keep adding a little bit of black as long as you're wet. 
You want to add a nice even line of water down black at your horizon line. And that will soften itself in the water. So you'll have a nice soft edge to that. Be sure to wipe off your table and then let that dry. You can add some oranges in, some peaches in, or some aliz alizarin in, as long as your sky is still wet. If some of your peachy colors got really washed out and you wanna add some, you can go and do that as long as you're a little bit damp yet. Don't try to do it if you are dry. But I'm going to go ahead in and add some additional oranges right underneath my, my um, dark clouds because I seem to have lost some of my peachy color. So I'm going to add some in. I'm still nice and wet there. You can see how my orange or my peachy color is already dissipating in the wetness. That's what I want it to do. I'm moving it around in my wetness. And that's all you need to do, as long as you are wet. If you are not, then you want to wait. Wait till tomorrow and re-wet your sky, and then you can always put in a little bit of peach over that. But don't try to do it if you're starting to dry. You can layer color on two weeks from now, as long as you're nice and dry. Now I'm taking on my same peachy color and I'm going to add that into my water in my waterway. I want that peachy reflection to go into my waterway. Not only will I add it into my waterway, but I'm going to go ahead and add some of it into my sand area. Follow your picture for that because again, not every area is going to get the color. If there's a mound in your sand, the mound that is away from the light is not going to get any color because nothing will be reflective on the downside of your mounds. If you wanna re-wet the area first, you can, or you can just simply paint it on and wet the edges and allow that edge to soften. That might be your easiest thing to do. We're not talking big, deep color here. We're talking very transparent color, just enough to give the, the impression of that sky color reflective on the sand. It's not really dark. It's nice and pastel -y color.
Now I mixed alizarin crimson and black, more black than the alizarin crimson, and I am painting my lighthouse with that color. Black and alizarin crimson. I don't want it to come off as looking real red because this is dusk. So there's not a lot of color. However, I don't want to make it just black because I do want the lighthouse to look as if it had some color. So I'm using alizarin crimson and some black. If you would prefer to use your cad red and black, that's fine too but I kind of like that little bit of a pinkish tone to it. So I used my alizarin crimson instead. And I'm painting in the red parts to my lighthouse. Make sure that if you're trying to do any little fine area, like the roof to that cupola, the, the real very top of the lighthouse, that you're using a nice small brush. Don't try to do it with a big brush. Do it with your smallest brush. There is a shadow from the lighthouse in the water. So I'm using my black and I am putting my reflective shadow in that water where the lighthouse is, below the lighthouse, in that waterway, a little bit along the wall, dry brushing a little bit on my fence posts just to roughen them up a little bit. Not every fence post, just my bigger ones. Just a little bit of dry brushing. Don't spend a lot of time on that. And then with my real fine brush, I'm going to put that real fine wire in that's holding those fence posts together. It follows the way the fence is, so it's not just all straight across. It goes in a snake form, just like the fence does. Pay attention to your picture. If you think it needs something else, go ahead and add it. I'm just adding a couple extra texture lines to create some roundness to some of my sand mounds. Look at your picture. See where you'd like to add some extra texturing. Again, this is something that can be done weeks from now. It does not have to all be done at the same time because footsteps can be added in any time. Any of this stuff can be added in any of the time because you're not um, putting something on top of it so it's not like you have to hurry up and, and get something done. You do want to make sure that you know your shadows come off the bottom of your posts, the shadows on the right side of the posts. You want to make sure that everything matches up, that your, you know, if you have footsteps going in one direction, they continue to go in that direction. If you have a hillside coming down to the right, then you want to continue things that way so that everything has a little bit of order to it. If there's an area that still needs some dry brushing, I re-dry brushed my little waterway because I thought it just looked a little bit too smooth. So I went ahead back up in there and did a little bit more dry brushing just to roughen that up a little bit, make it look like there was a lot of, you know, pretty intense rippling going on with that water.
Now I wanted a little bit more of some really light reflective uh, color in my water. So I took some cad yellow and just at the area where that buoy is, I put in some cad yellow, nice and wet. That's the only place I put it and I allowed that to dry. My finest, finest brush will be used to put in all of the fine detail. That's the little um, railing along the top of the, the lighthouse, the flagpole, anything like that is nice and fine with your little fine liner. Or if you're afraid to use your liner, you can use a watercolor brush. Just make sure your lines are straight that's very important. If you need to draw them with a pencil, fine, but make sure when you paint them that you are painting them in nice and straight. Looking at my lighthouse, I still want to deepen my lighthouse a little bit. So I'm going to put another wash of watered down black over my lighthouse. I'm going to put in my windows. Some of those windows, though, you don't want to paint your black over it because those windows, you see the pastel sky out those windows or through those windows. So you don't want to really ruin that you want to paint around those couple windows. Painting in my roof again, I'll paint in the area of my um, lighthouse that's not getting any of that light, just to make it look um, more shadowed. I'm really not gonna be losing my reddish color. You'll still see that reddish color, but you will also um, know that it's dusk and you're losing a lot of your a lot of your color to your lighthouse. That should do her. Great picture. Hope you learned a lot on this one, especially that nice pastel sky. Take your time. You have a lot of time to work on it. At least a week until the next tutorial. Happy painting.